nursing grudges, bitterness, anger, hatred, bad feelings towards others damages our heart. And the Holy Spirit uses our heart to express himself. When that heart is damaged, where does the Holy Spirit land? He has no landing place. How to love your enemies? <laughs> ah, I didn't hear you say what? <laughs> I said, hmm. It's a tough one. Tell never say it's a tough one. <laughs> Tell your neighbor it's a tough one. <laughs> oh my God. I just mentioned the title, How to Love Your Enemies. I say, hmm, hmm, hmm. What does that mean? It means all of us, we have what? Yes. I! Matthew 5, verse 43 to 48. Matthew 6, verse 14 to 15. Matthew 22, verse 39. Mark 10, verse 27. Romans 5, verse 10. Ephesians 2, verse 1 to 10. Ephesians 4, verse 32. They teach us how to love our enemies, which is a very tough one. Everyone can't imagine, how do I love my enemies? Let me read from that Matthew. Five. You have heard the law, that is verse 43, you have heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. And he sends rain on the just and the unjust. That is the righteous and the unrighteous. Verse 46, if you love only those who love you, what reward is there for? Even corrupt tax collectors do that very much. If you are kind, friendly only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But if you are to be perfect, as your father in heaven is perfect, you must love your enemies. This is what makes God perfect. God loves his enemies. You may do many things in your life, many good things, but if you lack love towards your enemies, you are not perfect, as your father in heaven is perfect. And what difference are you making? Because even those who don't come to church like you, they love their friends only. What makes us different from unbelievers, doubters, persecutors, haters, is that if we love our enemies, it makes us different from anyone. It makes us to be sons of God. Nursing grudges, bitterness, anger, hatred, bad feelings towards others damages our heart. And the Holy Spirit uses our heart to express himself. 
When that heart is damaged, where does the Holy Spirit land? He has no landing place. Genesis 8, verse 8 to 12. If the heart is damaged, the Holy Spirit has no landing place. He has no place to enter your life, and the only thing he uses in us, in a, it is our heart. But if our heart is damaged by anger, bitterness, hatred, bad feeling towards your neighbor, your enemy, then when the heart is damaged, how does the Holy Spirit work in your life? Because he only uses our heart. Genesis 8, verse 8. He also released the dove to see if the water had rescinded and it could find dry ground. Verse 9. But the dove could find no place to land because the water still covered the ground. So it returned to the boat. And Noah held out his hand and threw the dove back inside. Verse 10. After waiting another seven days, Noah released the dove again. Verse 11. This time the dove returned to him in the evening with a fresh olive leaf in its beak. Then no one knew that the flood waters were almost gone. Verse 12. He waited another seven days and then released the dove again. This time it did not come back. Are you listening to Genesis 8? Noah sent what? The dove went out and did what? And returned. Why? Because it could not find a place to, to land. Because the ground was covered with what? With water. This is exactly the Holy Spirit resemblance. If your heart is covered with bitterness, hatred, anger, the Spirit will come from the Father. But when he wants to land in your heart, you are bitter, you are anger, you are hating, this, yes, he can't lay, he go back. This is a symbol of Father and his spirit. The dove came back because it could not read it again. Genesis 8, verse 8. He also released a dove to see if the water had rescinded and it could find dry ground. Verse 9. But the dove could not find a place to land. It because could not the water... find a place to land because the ground was what? Covered with what? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But the dove could not find no place to land because the water still covered the ground. So it returned to the boat and Noah held out his hand and drew the dove back inside. Verse 10. After waiting another seven days, Noah released the dove again. Verse 11, this time the dove returned to him in the evening with a fresh olive leaf in its beak. Then no one knew that the flood waters were almost gone. Verse 12, he waited another seven days and then released the dove again. This time it did not come back. Why it did not come back? Because he has found a place to land and live there. When he brought the leaf, it told, it was telling Noah that, ah, things are getting better. The woman is getting it right. He says, okay, let's give her another seven days. Go. The only way I know that the lady, the woman is fine is when you don't come back. That I know that you can settle there. This is exactly what the Holy Spirit does. He wants to come and dwell in your heart. But each time he comes, he finds you hating your enemies. That's why Jesus in that Matthew 5, it was said by the Lord that you should love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies 
and pray for those who persecute you. What a tough one. In Christianity, we come across a heavy duty. of forgiving our enemies. And loving our neighbor as ourselves. Loving our enemies sound unreasonable. Loving our enemies seems unreasonable until we realize that we were also an enemy of God and God loved us and forgave us. Can never say, loving your enemy sound unreasonable, seems unreasonable until you realize that you were once an enemy of God and God loved you and he forgave you. It's very challenging. In Matthew 6, 14, the Bible makes it perfectly clear that if you don't forgive others, you will not be forgiven. Read it. Matthew 6, verse 14. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. Verse 15. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. That is all. The Bible makes it perfectly clear that if you don't forgive, if I don't forgive those who wrong me, I will not be forgiven. I will not be forgiven. Everyone says, you must forgive. It is good for you. Forgiveness is good until they themselves have someone to forgive. They begin to realize that forgiveness is easier said than done. Can never say forgiveness. They begin to realize that forgiveness is easier said than done. It means it is easy for me to say, please, you have to forgive. You have to, it's good. You have to forgive. Until I myself find myself having someone to forgive, then I feel it, that it is easy to say it than to do it. What a challenging duty. Tell never say, what a challenging duty. Very, very challenging. If you want to learn how to forgive, you must start with someone who is closer than your neighbor. That is your wife. Your husband, your parents, your children, I mean, your in laws. <laughs> Tell never say, if you want to learn how to forgive, you must start with someone. Who is closer than your neighbor? Who is that person? Uh-huh. 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 And what else again? Your in-laws. Because your neighbor is far. If you want to learn how to forgive, start at home. Charity begins at home they will teach you how to forgive your neighbor. 
These people that are closer than you, what? Mm, they are good to train us. Read again Matthew 5, 43, just verse 43. Matthew 5, verse 43. You have heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Uh -huh. Verse 44. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. No one wants to hear this. Nobody wants to hear this. Love my enemies and pray for them. Nobody wants to hear this. But it was Jesus' great design to engage his disciples to love one another and pray for those who persecuted them. What a difficult, heavy duty. It's not for the faint-hearted. This one is not for the weak. You need to be a mature Christian to get there. Forgiveness is learned. You learn it. It's not something that happens spontaneously. You have to learn it. And what does it take to learn? Experience. Tell never say, forgiveness is learned. It does not happen spontaneously. You have to learn it. And how do we learn? By what? By experience. This is what many of us are battling with, even men of God, even apostles. You want to say, I never struggle with issue of forgiveness. I struggle big time. What made me to realize as I struggle with it? People talk about you, people say wrong thing, people say, did, 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 did. people do this, people do this and everything. What I've learned about it is that each time you fight it against it, you progress in life. That's what changed my mind to say it's actually good for me. Everyone is struggling with this. I'm talking about Christians. Even ministers of God, pastor is struggling, and this is what is holding breakthrough. Progress. Breakthrough, blessing, success. This is what is holding it. The Holy Spirit has no place to learn. Your heart is covered with anger, revenge, bitterness. You want to fight back. You want to retaliate. You are bitter. You are sour inside. This is. And forgiveness does not happen spontaneously. It is learned. You have to learn. And how do you learn? By forgiving, starting with people that are closer to you than your neighbor. Your neighbor is very far. Start with this one that see what you eat. How you dress, how you do this, you never can see that. It's far. Matthew 22, verse 39. Matthew 22, verse 39. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. What does it mean to love my neighbor as myself? It means... Hate what your enemy do, but love them. Hate what your enemy do to you, but love them. That is, love your neighbor as your, and your neighbor could be your enemy. Your neighbor could be someone who do not share the same faith with you, who's not even a Christian. The Bible says, Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. What does he mean? Jesus is telling us that you did bad things in your life, but yet you loved yourself. This is what he's telling us, that you did bad things in the past, 
but you loved yourself as you were doing those bad things. Love your neighbor as your? Hate the bad they do, but love them. Hate what they do to you, but don't hate them. God loves sinners, but he hates sin. Tell me, I say, God loves sinners, but he hates sin. Loving our enemies, our neighbor, as ourselves, is loving them when there's nothing lovable about them. Tell me, be sincere, in your past life, what is it that was lovable about you that made God to love you? What good was in you then that made God to love you? Love people even when there is nothing lovable about them. Loving, likable about them. Loving our enemies is difficult until you realize Romans 5 verse 10. Read. Romans 5, verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through we the were death what? of his son. I can't hear you. Read it again. For if when we were his enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Who were you to God? Ask your neighbor, who were you to God? You, you are what? But God loved us. This is where it comes from. Love your enemies. You too, you were once an enemy of God. And God loved you. And all he wanted was to save you. Enemy of God. Former enemy of God. Look at former enemy of God. <laughs> former what? And God did what? He loved me. Now I'm failing to love my enemies now. Look at myself. Look at myself. Now it's difficult to love my enemies. But me, former enemy of God, forgiving, washed with the precious blood of Jesus, Clean now, pure, holy, righteous. Now I'm struggling now to forgive my what? On enemies. Look at what we are doing to ourselves, Christians. This is our problem is. We move from this church to this church to this church to this. Deal with this first. You, get it, you will get it right in everything you do. You are praying every day, but look at this. There is a feeling, a bad feeling, that no one in this world can live without. A feeling that comes from time to time. When you hear wrong things said about you, bad things said about you, everybody feels that pain. When people are laughing, mocking at you, everybody pass through that pain. But I'm here to tell you, each time it pops out, hit it on its head in the name of Jesus. It is difficult to do it in the beginning, but the attempt to do it is not impossible. It's like greeting your neighbor. It's difficult, your enemy. It's like greeting your enemy. It is very difficult to say to your enemy, how are you? It is very what? But the attempt to do it is not impossible. No one is going to cut your hand. 
to say to your enemy, how are you? It is difficult. Ede? But the attempt to do it is not what? It's not impossible. No one is going to cut your fingers. Just do it. Hi. Good morning. And you pass. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Yay. Yes, I do it. When I see them, I say, oh. And you feel relieved. Oh, my God. What a blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell me, I say, in Christ's life, the best thing is growth. In Christ's life, the best thing is what? Is growth. You need to grow. Such things of greeting your enemy are a sign of growth. It is difficult to greet your enemy. But the attempt to do it is not impossible. Do it. Amen. Hating our enemies makes us devils. But loving them makes us to be like God. Amen. Amen. Ten of us say hating our enemies make us devils. But loving them make us to be like God. Hmm. Hmm. Listen to what Matthew 5 says. He said when you do this, greeting them, you are showing that you are children. You are sons of God. Because unbelievers, that is what they do alone. They don't greet this side. They hate. They greet only the ones they love. They don't love this side. They only love the ones who love them. Your enemy is not as bad as you think. It is the bad they do that make them bad. If you remove the bad in them, they are good people. Ask their relatives, they will tell you. They were not born hating. They were sensitive in the past. They were careful of what they say. They will check the platform they are using if it's the right one to talk. They were God-fearing. What you see them do to you today is that they have grown in that hatred, that anger, that bitterness, but in truth, they were not like that. Ten of us say, my enemy is not as bad as I think because they were not born that way. Ask their relative, ask their close acquaintance, they will tell you that eight years, nine years ago, this man was very God-fearing. This woman was God-fearing, respectful, loving, sensitive. He wouldn't just talk anyhow. He was very cautious of the future. For what you see today, not caring, they were not like this. That's why I said our enemies are not as bad as we think. They have grown in that. The love you keep is the love you give. The hatred you keep is the hatred you give. The anger you keep is the anger you give. The jealousy you keep is the jealousy you give. Because good and evil grow and increase at compound interest. When you take a thousand rent and send it to the bank, now in September, they will tell you by next year, this time September, it will grow by 5%. Good and evil are the same. If you hate me now, by December you will hate me more. By next year, this time, you will graduate in your hatred towards me. If you love me now, that little love you are battling with, by December you will love me a little bit. By next year, this time, you will love me more. Because good and evil grows and increase at compound interest, just like your money. You take your money to the bank, it's 20,000. By 12 months, it has increased by 5%, 5.5% this. 
is exactly what happens. You need to deal with that hatred or else it will grow in you. You need to deal with the anger now or else it will grow in you. You will be worse than what you are today, tomorrow. We keep saying the best is yet to come. Yes, it is true. The best is yet to come. As long as we keep forgiving, as long as we keep loving, the best is indeed yet to come. If not, the best is yet to come will remain a mere statement. Will remain a what? A mere statement. You will keep sharing. People will not see any best in your life because of these two things. Forgiving and what? And loving. If anybody say to David Ponyani, you are bitter, you are angry, please check the fruits in my life. They will deny your statement. 16 years. Each time this come, I fight to the brim to deal with anger, hate, pain. Each time they come, I fight. I hit, each time it pop out, I hit it on his head in the name of Jesus. I have learned that it is difficult at the beginning, but the attempt to do it is not impossible. Look at the testimony you listen to, the healing. Somebody losing his sight, a situation of a family. This. Look at this. Can this be the results of bitter anger? I will forfeit all these testimonies. The blessing of God in this ministry, I will forfeit all those things just because of one thing, unforgiveness. I fight. Each time it wants to come, I hit it on its head in the name of Jesus. And I have learned that it is difficult, but the attempt to do it is not impossible. Peter struggled with forgiveness. In the Bible, in Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Matthew 18, verse 21. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? How often? Peter was tired. Until the Lord Are you listening to me? Peter was what? What he was what? Peter was what? Yes. In English he was what? He was tired. He went to Jesus, the man, our master. Listen to Peter. Yes, let's go. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive Wait, someone? He said what? No, 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 no. He said, well, who? Said, Read again. Lord. <laughs> you were not there. My spirit can go today. today. That's why I'm helping you. <laughs> you are polishing it with English. Are you listening? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say, Peter struggled with forgiveness. Yes. Matthew 18, 21. Let's hear what Peter said. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? Peter was counting. I could feel a one, two, three, four, five. Six, I'm completely come over. Till last year, December. Are you listening? Are you listening? He was counting. 
Ah, yeah, last week, you were getting a game. And hard. And I want to go to Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That I was counting. Uh -huh. Verse 22. No, not even seven times, Jesus replied. But 70 times 7. Which is 490 times one person. 400 and one, one what? Imagine if I have to have your books. Each time you offend me, I write 7, 10. <laughs> Where am I going to keep these books? Eh? Staying in one room. We're going to the or you are staying in a four bedroom. Even if you are staying in a mansion, how are you going to keep these books? People's record. Jesus was telling him that forever. He says 77. He was just giving him an impossible number. Where are you going to start recording? That it is second time, two time, twentieth time. And he keeps saying, the more 120. <laughs> We're not 200 away. <laughs> are you not going to run mental? Understand when we are listening. How to love your enemies? I've just given you. Let us rise up. We believe you have been blessed by the video you have watched. Follow us on our social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell. Like our Facebook page and follow us on Instagram and TikTok. John 14 verse 6, Jesus is the roadmap.